Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew. Lights, camera, cats. Chapter 3. You're fired. Fluffington, Mr. Banner shouted. Fluffington, Yasmin shouted at the same time. Fluffington skidded to a halt. She blinked up at Mr. Banner and Yasmin with her emerald green eyes and let out a loud, angry meow. Nancy stared in amazement at the famous cat. Fluffington's luxurious white fur was covered with gooey blue paint. She looked like an alien. She also looked bigger than Nancy remembered from the Crunchies commercials. Nancy wondered if she had been eating too many Crunchies lately. What in blazes is going on? Mr. Banner demanded. Poor Fluffington, Bess murmured. She needs a bath, Hannah said worriedly. Yasmin scooped Fluffington up in her arms. She made a face as the gooey blue paint smeared onto her clothes and arms. She was supposed to be with the groomers getting her beauty treatment, Yasmin told Mr. Banner. I'll check with Patsy and see if she knows anything. Patsy! A young woman came rushing up to Yasmin and Mr. Banner. She was holding a brush in one hand and a towel in the other. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry, Patsy said breathlessly. I was in the middle of grooming her. I turned my back for 30 seconds to get some supplies, and she was gone. What happened? She gasped, taking in the sight of Fluffington's blue fur. What did she get into? From behind a pile of boxes came a muffled giggle. Nancy craned her head, trying to see who it was. Dad, I think someone's hiding behind there, Nancy whispered to her father, pointing. Mr. Banner overheard her. He walked over to the boxes and peered behind them. Beazle, Mr. Banner said angrily. Come out here right this second. A tall, skinny boy emerged. He had short, spiky brown hair, and his face was a sea of freckles. He looked like he was about 12 years old. Nancy studied him closely. His hands and t-shirt were covered with blue paint. Hey, Dad, Beazle said to Mr. Banner, waving. He's Mr. Banner's son, Nancy thought. Explain yourself, Beazle, Mr. Banner demanded. Why are you covered with blue paint? What did you do to Fluffington? It's just stage makeup, Beazle said, rolling his eyes. What's the big deal? Do you know what you've done? Mr. Banner shouted. This is one prank too many, son. You're fired. Fired? Mr. Beazle repeated. From what? From this movie. You've demonstrated to me that you're not mature enough to have even a small acting part. Go to your, uh, go into my office and sit down and think about what you did, Mr. Banner ordered Beazle. You're not allowed to use your cell phone or your game player for the rest of the day. Whatever, Beazle said sulkily. He walked into his father's office and closed the door behind him. Wow, Mr. Banner just fired his own son, Nancy thought. That's pretty serious. I'll get Fluffington cleaned up, Patsy offered. She took the unhappy cat from Yasmin and hurried off. I think Fluffington's gaining weight. Maybe we should switch her to low-fat crunchies, Yasmin called out after Patsy. I'm very sorry about all this, Mr. Banner apologized to Mr. Drew, Hannah, Nancy, George, and Bess. You'll have to excuse me. I need to talk to my son. Carson, I know you and I have an appointment tomorrow afternoon to discuss business. Right, Mr. Drew said. Mr. Banner turned to Nancy and her friends. I'll have Yasmin take care of the paperwork for you to join our cast as extras. Maybe Carson or Hannah can bring you by here tomorrow morning around 9? We're shooting a crowd scene, and you three would be perfect for it. Sure, Nancy, George, and Bess said in unison. They exchanged high fives. Still, Nancy felt sorry for poor Fluffington. She hoped Patsy would be able to get all the blue paint off of her. Beazle's mom and Brett are divorced, said Meadows, said Meadow, who is one of the makeup artists. Beazle's got some uh, issues having to do with rules, as in he doesn't like to follow them. Stay still, Nancy, she added. Nancy obeyed. It was Tuesday morning, and she was sitting in one of the dressing rooms at Thunder Chicken Studios. Meadow had already done George and Bess's hair and makeup. Now it was Nancy's turn. Nancy's hair was in hot curlers. Meadow had decided to style it into big fluffy curls. Meadow was in the process of brushing Nancy's cheeks with pink powder. Then Meadow smooth, smoothed pink lipstick onto Nancy's lips. Nancy crinkled her nose. Lipstick tasted really weird. After Meadow finished with Nancy, the three girls were to be taken to an outdoor set near soundstage number three. There, Mr. Banner planned to shoot a crowd scene on the, on the Mitchell family's street. Not a real street, but a fake street with fake houses on it. 
Is Beasel an actor? Best asked Meadow. No way. His dad gave him a part in the movie. A really small part, because he needed to keep him busy, Meadow replied. Why does Mr. Banner need to keep Beasel busy? George spoke up. Beasel's mom is in Europe for the summer, Meadow replied. Mr. Banner is supposed to be taking care of him. Beasel had a babysitter for a while, but she quit after Beasel put a mouse in her backpack. The second babysitter quit after Beasel slipped shampoo into her smoothie. The third and fourth ones also quit. Mr. Banner finally gave up and started bringing Beasel to the set. Wow, Nancy thought. Beasel's a real troublemaker. Mr. Banner figured that giving Beasel a part in the movie would keep him in line, Meadow chuckled. I guess not. The dressing room door burst open. Yasmin rushed in. Have any of you seen her? She demanded. Seen who, Yasmin? Meadow said. Fluffington, Yasmin replied in an urgent-sounding voice. Nancy, Bess, and George all shook their heads. No, why, Yasmin? Meadow said curiously. Yasmin frowned. She looked really worried. Fluffington is missing, she announced. Chapter 4. Where's Fluffington? Fluffington is missing, Bess gasped. Maybe she just went for a walk or something, George suggested. I don't think so, Yasmin said anxiously. No one's seen her in the last hour or so. It's not like Fluffington to disappear like that. When was the last time anyone saw her, Nancy asked Yasmin. Yasmin looked thoughtful. She was sitting in her usual place near the director's chair, eating her crunchies breakfast. That's where she always gets fed. A couple of the Wranglers, Jojo and Mikey, were with her. Wranglers? Bess repeated, confused. Wranglers handle the animals on the set, Yasmin replied. Jojo thought that Mikey was watching Fluffington, and Mikey thought that Jojo was watching her. During that time, Fluffington got away somehow. And now she's missing, Yasmin added. Everyone's looking for her, including Mr. Banner. He's super upset. We can help you guys look for her, Nancy offered. We're good at finding missing people, and animals too. Nancy, Bess, and I have a club called the Clue Crew, George explained. We solve mysteries. That's great, yes, Yasmin said gratefully. We need all the help we can get. Fluffington, here, Fluffington. Come here, Fluffy Wuffy Cat. Nancy, George, and Bess were wandering around the back of the alien set, calling out Fluffington's name. They looked under set pieces. They looked under movie equipment. They looked behind piles of boxes. Other people were searching for Fluffington, too, inside and outside. Just then, Nancy got an idea. I want to check out the place where Fluffington was having breakfast this morning. That's the last place anyone saw Fluffington, right? George said. Nancy nodded. Exactly. Maybe we can find some clues there. The girls walked over to the director's chair, which was near the fake living room. The chair was black cloth on tall wooden legs that crisscrossed and made X's in front and back. The chair had the word director written on it in big white letters. This is Mr. Banner's special chair for when he's directing a scene, Nancy thought. Near the director's chair was a big blue bowl with the word Fluffington on it in gold. Nancy knelt down and peered into it. She could tell by a, a few tiny brown crumbs that it used to have crunchies in it. Fluffington had obviously eaten every last bite. There was also a water bowl. George and Bess knelt down too. Do you see any clues, Nancy? George asked. Nancy scanned the area carefully. I don't see anything. If anyone kid kidnapped Fluffington from the spot, the person didn't leave any clues. Nice hairstyle, not? Nancy turned around at the sound of the familiar voice. Beasel Banner was standing there. He gave Nancy a mean smile. Nancy realized that Beasel was commenting on her hairstyle. She reached up and touched her hair. She was still wearing the hot curlers that Meadow had put there. What are you doing here? Nancy asked Beasel. I thought you were, uh, Fired, Beasel said. He set his backpack down on the ground and pulled a granola bar out of it. He unwrapped it and began chowing down on it with his mouth open. My dad will change his mind, Beasel went on. He always does about stuff like this. I know exactly how to make him do what I want him to do. Have you seen Fluffington? Nancy asked him. She's missing, you know, George added. Maybe that dumb poodle powwow or pom-pom or whatever its name is ate her. Beasel cracked up at his own joke. Bess glared at him. That's not funny. Beasel shrugged. You three are too young to appreciate my excellent sense of humor. He pulled a cell phone out from his pocket and flicked it open. Gotta make a call. See you later. Bye. Bye, Curlerhead.
he added, grinning at Nancy. I don't like him, Bess whispered to Nancy and George, after Bezel had disappeared around the corner. Me neither, George whispered back. Just then, Nancy noticed a black backpack lying on the ground. It had the initials BB on it. Bezel left his backpack behind, Nancy told her friends. She walked over to it. She realized that if she hurried, she could catch up to Bezel and return it to him. The backpack was unzipped at the top. Its contents caught Nancy's eye. She saw a couple of magazines, a balled up red t-shirt, and some stinky socks. She made a face. And then she noticed something else. There was a plastic container full of something that looked like dried up glass grass clippings. Nancy squinted to see the label. It said catnip. What is it, Nancy? George asked her. Did you find a clue? Nancy pointed out the catnip container to her friends. Why would Bezel have catnip in his backpack? She said in a low voice. Unless, Bess began, unless he used it to lure Fluffington away. Nancy finished. Maybe Bezel is our kidnapper. Okay. And that's it for this section of Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew. I hope you liked it. Bye.